Why do we need a new, larger, more powerful, more expensive particle collider to study the Higgs boson and Higgs physics in exquisite detail? Just one more collider, bro. I promise, bro. Just one more collider and we'll find all the particles, bro. Just give me $22 billion and we'll solve physics. I promise, bro. This is the nonsensical meme that you get when you suggest that we should build a larger, more powerful, and more expensive particle collider. This meme frustrates the hell out of me for a number of reasons. Firstly, new colliders are not designed to solve all of physics nor to simply find weirdly named hypothetical particles dreamed up in the heads of theorists to solve the problems of dark matter and dark energy. These new machines have solid, well-grounded, no-lose physics cases. In addition, there is a painstaking ongoing discussion in the field of particle physics regarding the form any potential future collider should take. This discussion seeks to ensure that any future collider will extract as much physics as possible from every dollar spent on it. As such, the building of a 100 kilometer long future circular collider at CERN in Geneva is far from certain. The project could be beaten to the punch by the Chinese Circular Electron Positron Collider. Nations may decide that they do not wish to fund such a larger machine. Or scientists may make a bold step and decide that it's time to build the first collider smashing together unstable particles. Take their muon shot and build a muon collider. The bottom line, particle physicists are not simply looking to throw money at the wall. However, despite its deficiencies, this meme does lay bare one stark truth. Particle physicists have not adequately communicated the physics use case for new, massive, expensive colliders to the public. Particle physicists have unfortunately ceded online spaces to doomsayers, keen to present a simple, easy to digest superficial straw man of that use case, often for their own benefit. Given this state of affairs, many clearly believe that there is no solid use case for building such machines, and that particle physicists are simply fighting the inevitable, spinning their wheels and producing ever more convoluted theoretical predictions to justify the creation of expensive, long-term building projects that will secure their cozy jobs and lucrative funding. That's the sort of rhetoric I consistently run into when I see the One More Collider meme pop up in my social media mentions. This accusation that scientists are beholden to funding agencies and their wallets, rather than simply championing programs of research they believe to be worthwhile, is a common anti-science trope deployed against climate scientists, vaccine researchers, and evolutionary scientists, and is now sadly being pushed by some of our largest contrarian online physics influencers. When made against particle physicists, highly qualified individuals working in a field in which they are constantly overworked and undervalued, such accusations are delusional. However, the preponderance of such reasoning in online spaces and the prevalence of the Just One More Collider meme made me realize one thing. It's way past time to start pushing back and presenting the real, no-lose physics case for new, more powerful colliders. So what is that use case? Well, a significant portion of the true physics case for new colliders revolves around exquisitely studying the Higgs boson particle discovered at CERN in 2012 and its surrounding physics. The Higgs boson is a completely unique particle, the first ever seemingly fundamental spin-free scalar particle that we've ever observed and the only one that exists within the framework of the standard model. There are 19 free parameters in the standard model, not including neutrino masses, that cannot currently be derived from theoretical first principles, but are instead determined and put in by hand from experiment. In particular, the masses of all fundamental particles, their mixing, differences between particles and antiparticles, and the basic universal vacuum structure are all derived from experimental data. 15 of these 19 parameters are intrinsic to the coupling of standard model particles to the Higgs sector, illustrating the Higgs boson centrality and paramount importance in the standard model. No mature theory can have so many parameters that are simply put in by hand, but 
if we want to understand whatever physics controls why most of these fundamental parameters take the values that they do, and understand the physics grounding behind the standard model, we have to interrogate and understand the Higgs. As such, the Higgs boson is a portal to answering many of the most pressing open questions in particle physics, including the origin of all flavour physics, why there are three generations within the standard model, the stability of the universal vacuum, and perhaps even the matter-antimatter asymmetry of our universe that facilitates our very existence and ongoing curiosity. The Higgs boson is a new, unique and far-reaching probe of the nature, history, structure and potential future of our universe. Discovering this fundamental probe and then failing to build new machines to wield it and study the intricacies of Higgs physics would be akin to having discovered gravitational waves in 2015 and then deciding not to build new experiments such as the space-based LISA to see the universe afresh through this extraordinary and unique new filter. If we are going to discover new, unique constituents of our very universe and then fail to study them in exquisite detail, I have to ask, what on earth do those claiming particle physics is dying think the field is for? When the W and Z bosons, which mediate the weak interaction, were discovered in proton-antiproton collisions at the 7 kilometer long CERN superproton synchrotron in 1983, focus quickly shifted to studying these unique new particles in detail at the 27 kilometer long Large Electron-Positron Collider turned on in 1989. A fundamental particle discovery in a messy Hadron Collider was followed by exquisite analysis of the discovered particles in a clean Lepton Collider. Studying the Higgs boson and the Higgs potential in a messy Hadron Collider like the Large Hadron Collider is like viewing a beautiful landscape through a dusty window. We need to do better. We need to zoom in. We need to wipe away the dust. Now the Higgs has been discovered, it is essential that we repeat the cycle of the 1980s and build machines to study it with precision. We can't just discover the Higgs boson and assume all Higgs physics obeys the predictions of the standard model. We have to check. We have a duty to test and complete the standard model. If we find new physics and new particles along the way, all the better. In the early 2000s, we particle physicists failed. We fail to explain to the public why the Higgs boson is so incredibly important. We fail to explain just how central it is to the standard model. We fail to explain why discovering the Higgs boson at the Large Hadron Collider would be the first step in a decades long program to probe its remaining mysteries, verify or rebuke the standard model and attack some of the deepest and most stubborn open questions in particle physics. In the run up to turning on the Large Hadron Collider, Physicists were understandably excited to discuss the amazing, theoretically grounded phenomena they hoped to find. Supersymmetric particles, extraspatial dimensions, dark matter particles, and microscopic black holes. The paramount importance of the Higgs boson was not fully conveyed. Given that the more exotic phenomena did not pop out at the LHC, but the expected Higgs boson did, it's understandable that some now feel shortchanged and question whether particle physicists understand where they're headed. However, despite these sentiments being entirely reasonable, the road ahead for particle physics is clear. Future colliders have an incredibly solid physics use case, a use case with the Higgs boson at its heart. It's just a use case that hasn't, so far, been adequately communicated outside of the field. One huge pillar of the Higgs physics program is the focus of this video series the mapping of the Higgs potential, and a full exploration of the nature of electroweak symmetry breaking, the process that ensures we're here to ask any questions at all. We will dive deeply into these topics in the next video. But for now, let me assure you that these goals are not the desperate search for a dark matter particle predicted by one particular niche theory. They are not a deluded last gasp to discover a theory of everything and solve physics and they are not a money printing press for greedy, money-grabbing physicists. They are part of a clear, well-grounded and essential program of research that will produce no-lose deliverables, work to stress test the standard model, and address huge open questions in physics. Questions whose answers are currently just tantalizingly beyond our grasp. 
Questions whose answers perhaps only particle physicists can provide. In video two of this series, I will introduce the Higgs potential, explain its form within the standard model and break down the concept of electroweak symmetry breaking. I will also explain how the true Higgs potential of our universe remains a deep mystery. See you next time when we really get started. I want to know what you think, because you're the scholars of enlightenment that I do this for. So please take a moment, if you wish, to let me know down in the comment section. And if you like this video, please consider leaving a like, subscribing, setting up notifications, and sharing this video more widely. I can't tell you how much these simple actions help me out and how much I'd appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being scientific. Thanks for being bad.